let f be a function defined by f of x equals x times the quantity 4 minus x, which is this parabola right here. Let r be the region bounded by the graphs of y equal f of x and the x-axis. So my big region here is this guy. That's the solid region. And uh, set up the definite integral, set it up. Now notice it's set up the definite integral so you don't have to actually evaluate it. Set up the definite integral whose value equals the volume of the solid produced when the region R revolves around the horizontal line Y equal X. Hint, labeling the sketch of R below might help. <laughs> yeah, if you haven't figured that one out by now, uh, that's good news and a great hint. Okay, now <clears throat> this guy, this is the region in question right here. I don't want to do too much drawing on it because I have to draw other stuff. So that's the region in question. That This has to rotate above up here, okay? This is a really gigantic picture, so I've got to be careful. So if I, I mean, if I really want to be dramatic here, I can draw. You know, let me zoom out a little bit here. There we go just for a second. I can draw that region up here and then maybe use my imagination a little bit more. A large part of doing these problems is using your imagination because you have to imagine what is this thing going to look like if this is rotated around in a circular fashion like this. And so this is going to be kind of rounded here at the end like this little hole in the front and the back. And uh, so this will be all hollow and then the sides will be vertical if you think about like laying it on the ground like this. All right. But we're looking at it like this to actually calculate this integral. So let me try to use a different color pen here. I don't know if you can see it very well but I have a purple pen that might help. All right so what we actually have to do is calculate the radius of the outside part and the radius of the inside part. If you think about slicing this, let me get my other pen color here. If I make a slice, it's going to come all the way down like this. And it's going to look like a giant washer. I'll draw it a little bit smaller than what the actual size is. But it will have that particular slice right there. If I slice it and pull it out, it'll have a hole in the middle. And that's what I'm trying to find the volume of. The volume of a slice, not the volume of the whole thing. Just, just one slice and then I add them up. So if I want to measure this volume, I have to take the, the volume of the big piece that has a radius I'm going to call R sub out and the volume of the smaller piece, which I call R sub n. I find the volume of the very thin cylinder with the big radius. I find the volume of the very thin cylinder with the small radius, and I subtract the two. That's really all it is, pretty straightforward. So that's why I worry about R in and R out. So let me zoom in just slightly here. Okay. Now the radius here, it just can shows, shows up on this half. So if I say, if I draw from here to here, for my random slice, that's my radius of the outside. If I draw from here to here, that's the radius of the inside. And I just have to somehow describe that in terms of y equals 6, which is this right here, and then y equals 4 minus x times x, which is that graph right there. So let's see. <clears throat> the radius of the outside, no matter where I put my slice, the radius of the outside is consistently 6 due to the fact that this is flat on the bottom. So the radius of the outside is 6. The radius of the inside has to do with this curve, but it's, it's actually 6 minus the values of those curves. So where I slice it kind of moves according to the curve itself. So the, my inside radius is 6 units minus the function value. 6, which is the whole length, minus the function value gives me a radius of the inside. So 6 minus 
x times 4 minus x. Sorry, I keep writing that in reverse. Just, you'll, you'll be okay. Now, if I want to do the volume of my slice, Again, it's the idea that this is a real thin cylinder. And um, the thin cylinder has a volume of pi r squared h. But this is going to be the outside radius minus pi r squared h for the inside radius. If I just do my substitution, pi times 6 squared. And now h isn't the thickness, though. Um, if I think about how thick this is right here, it's just a small change in x. So the height of my slice is going to be a small change in x, not h, x, minus pi. Now r sub n is 6 minus x, 4 minus x, and that whole thing is squared. And the thickness is the same as it is over here, delta x. Now you can simplify this if you'd like. Um, you can factor out a pi and you're left with 36 minus 6 minus x, 4 minus x squared. And then you can factor out a delta x in the end. So that's it a little bit more, whoops, sorry guys. That's a, a little bit more simplified. So now I just need to set up an integral. I'm going to use this interior as the integrand is the interior. 36 minus 6 minus, and you know, don't bother messing around with this because you don't have to actually evaluate it. Just leave it like this. Now we have to think about our bounds. So if I move my slices back and forth, the one extreme, x is 0, and the other extreme, x is 4. So my bound goes from 0 to 4. And then there's my definite integral whose value equals the volume of the solid produced when the region R revolves around the horizontal line Y equals 6. Again, the way that I did this problem, i.e. drawing a picture, drawing a slice, uh, finding the volume of that slice, focusing on that and not the big picture yet. So you're actually focusing on something small. and then But using the graph to calculate the things that are changing and then putting it together to come up with the right integral. Take your time on these because a small change can actually make quite a bit of difference in how the structure is set up.